Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the energy module of the Year 11 Chemistry syllabus. And in particular, we'll be looking at temperature and the kinetic theory of gases. Okay? So in the last lesson, we looked at the starting point of the kinetic theory. We looked at what actually is the kinetic theory of gases. Um, and now we're going to look at the effect of the temperature on this kinetic theory and how it fits in together. Okay. So temperature is a measure of the energy, the partic uh, of the energy in, of the particles in a system. Okay. So when you have a set of particles like this, the temperature measures how much energy each of those particles has. Okay. And as you can see, as the temperature goes up, the speed of the particles goes up as well. In a gas, this is true. So for a gas, however, there is essentially no bonding forces within a gas. Okay, so each of those particles that you see here are all traveling independently, and there's no way that all there's negligible forces of these particles between each particle. Okay? So between these blue and pink particles, there's practically no forces holding them together. Okay? So the energy of the system is simply the sum total of the kinetic energies of the gas particles. Okay? So if we looked at the total energy of this box, the total energy of this box would be the addition of each of the kinetic energies of these molecules. Okay? So the kinetic energy of each of these particles, we add them all together, and that gives us the total kinetic energy of that box. Okay? So therefore, temperature in a gas system is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. Okay, so the temperature gives us an idea about the average speed of these particles. Now remember that because each particle is traveling ran at random speeds and at random, in random directions, we have to only consider the temperature as the average. Because remember there will be collisions and things happening that keep changing the speeds. Um, so the speeds won't always be um, the average speed. But the temperature tells us at least what the average is of all these different speeds that are occurring. So the average kinetic energy of a system is directly proportional to the temperature. Okay, so many scientists have studied this, and in particular Boltzmann was one of them, and several others, studied the thermodynamics of gas systems. And so what they found was that, so essentially what it means is by proportional, it means that if you double the temperature, you'll double the kinetic energy of the gas. Okay? So if this was 10 degrees at the start and 20 degrees by the end, the kinetic energy at the start would be half that of the end. So the relationship between the kinetic energy and the temperature is given by this, okay? this equation here. So the average kinetic energy, E bar, which is the E with the over bar, is equal to 3 on 2 times Kb times the temperature where Kb is what's called the Boltzmann's constant. And we'll look at what that number is in the question segment, so you don't need to use it right now. So basically, it's a very simple formula. You just figure out the temperature. The Boltzmann's constant is a constant. You can look it up in, on the internet or in a book. And 3 on 2 is just 3 on 2. That's, that's OK. So we can work out the, the, energy of this, the mean energy of this system really, really easily. So we. We're going to now talk about the kinetic energy distribution and activation energy. So what we're going to talk about now is we're going to extend this concept of the, of the sort of energy distribution and sort of see how that relates to the activation energy. Okay? So the kinetic energy of the gas molecules is not uniform. Okay? So in that little box that I drew with all the circles in it, they're all moving at different speeds randomly um, in all different directions. So if we look here, you can see this is the kinetic energy on the bottom, this axis. And here's the number of molecules, or proportion of molecules, on the y-axis. So for this yellow line, which we'll just say is, say, 398 Kelvin or something, that is sort of the, the one where the maximum molecules have that speed. right? And so we call it sort of the average, because it's the center, center point of this distribution. So you can see that there are less molecules down here with very, very high energies. So you can see the kinetic energy here is quite big. 
but there are very few molecules that move at that speed. Okay? And likewise, at very low speeds, you can see there are not many molecules traveling at low speeds as well. So you can see that the majority of them tend to, tend to accumulate sort of here at this speed. Okay? So each particle travels at a different speed, creating this velocity distribution that we mentioned. And as the temperature increases, the distribution skews to the right as the average kinetic energy increases. Okay? So what does that mean? So as you can see, if we increase the temperature to 498 Kelvin, it got a little bit lower, got a little bit flatter. But now the, the average sort of temperature is here. So you can see it's moved to the right. So you can see it's gone to higher energies. So as we increase the temperature, we've got a higher average energy. right? And you can see there are more particles now. So where I said before there are very few particles here, there are many more particles now on the blue line. Okay? Because the we've sort of shifted the whole curve to the right because we've increased the energy that's available to the system. Okay? So for instance here, there's sort of not very many particles, but on the blue line, there's almost double the number of particles. So that's what's happening when we increase the temperature. We're moving that, that distribution to the right, and we're suddenly getting more available energy out of the system, or for the system. So for an arbitrary reaction, only a small proportion of the molecules have the sufficient energy. Okay? But as the temperature distribution increases, the, the distribution skews, and a larger proportion of the molecules have the required energy. So what does that mean? Let's say the activation energy was here. So any energy above this, this line that I just drew in. As you can see on the, green, the yellow line, there aren't many particles that have this energy, right? You can see that because there's a very low proportion. But if we jump up to the blue one, you can see this whole space here, including all of the parts of the yellow line, now has the correct energy. So by increasing the temperature, we have more particles with the right amount of energy to achieve that reaction or activation energy. Okay? And that's why we generally increase the temperature of systems to get more reactions happening, because that exact, um, basically that exact process happens. We get more energy for the particles, more collisions, or more, en more particles with the right amount of energy, and so we get more reactions. So the reaction rate increases if we increase the temperature. So the last thing we're going to talk about sort of in this lesson is other modes of energy in gases. So basically, we've just been talking about what's called translational energy. So you've got a molecule. There's your molecule. And it's traveling in that direction. And that's what we call its energy. This movement from here to here is its energy. Okay? And that's what we've been talking about. But not all of the energy in a system is all stored this way. Okay? There are many ways that a molecule can store its energy. So for instance, a polyatomic atom, or molecule, sorry, polyatomic molecule, can move in three directions, so three dimensions. So it can go this way, up and down, so into the board or out of the board up and down. And, but it can also rotate. So as you saw, if you look at this diagram, it rotates. So it rotates like this and then like this. And also, um, sort of, it tumbles as well. So that is part of the, it can store energy by rotating as well. So it can move in the three dimensions, right? It can rotate, so it can tumble and rotate. So that's, you know, sort of six different ways it can store energy. But it can also stretch. If you saw that last one, it's about to happen again. So it can stretch. So the bonds can actually act like springs. And so it can store energy by stretching that spring a little bit. Okay, so it can store energy by moving in any direction, by rotating, or by stretching the bonds. Okay? So this allows them to store energy within these internal motions. So there's external motions like the the movement in three dimensions, there's the rotations, and also the bond stretching. And that's the ways that molecules can store energy. So each direction of motion is called a degree of freedom. Um, so some molecules have 
5 degrees of freedom or less. So in nitrogen, there's 5 degrees of freedom. It can move in three dimensions as well as two internal rotational directions. Okay, so that's what we call degrees of freedom. And the more degrees of freedom a molecule has, the more heat energy it can store because it can move in all sorts of different directions and store all that energy in a certain way. Okay? So that concludes today's lesson on the kinetic theory or temperature and its relationship to the kinetic theory. Um, we looked at how the temperature influences the velocity distribution of the particles and we also looked at the energy storage mechanisms that molecules have. Okay, so we'll move on to the question segment and hopefully you'll be able to learn something more or expand the knowledge that we've already placed here. So at zero degrees Celsius, the average kinetic energy of water molecules in ice is less than liquid water, the same as liquid water, less than the average kinetic energy of oxygen molecules, greater than the average kinetic energy of oxygen molecules. Okay, well, water at zero degrees Celsius is frozen, so its kinetic energy will be very low. So it's definitely not going to be on the same level as oxygen, because oxygen is a gas, and you know at zero degrees Celsius you still have oxygen gas. So it will move much more rapidly than a water molecule. So it's not going to be these two. Okay. But the question is, is it less than that of liquid water or more than that of liquid water? Well, it's actually the same as liquid water because ice water at zero degrees Celsius is basically liquid water at zero degrees Celsius. So the kinetic energy will be the same. And so that's our answer. Okay. So it's never going to be less than this because they're at the same temperature. So they must be the same. So why can temperature be used to measure the kinetic energy of, a particle, of particles in a gas, but not any other phase? Okay. So basically, we can use temperature alone to measure the kinetic energy of gas particles, but we can't just use temperature with, it, with other phases. Okay. And why is that? Well, temperature is a measure of the energy in a system. Okay. So the total energy of a system. That's what temperature measures. Now, in a solid and a liquid, the energy can be stored in the motion of the particles, as well as within the internal, uh, the intermolecular bonds. Okay. So there can be particles moving, right, in all sorts of directions, but particles also sort of bond together. So they tend to bond together as well. So energy can be stored in these intermolecular bonds as well as in these motions as well. So you can't just relate all of that energy to the motion like you can in a gas. And why is that? Because in a gas, there's negligible intermolecular bonds. So the, the particles don't bond together at all. So no energy is stored between molecules holding each other together. So the only component of energy in that system is the energy in the motion of each particle. And that's why we can use it to measure the kinetic energy, but we can't do it in sort of the, the solid or liquid phase. Therefore, we can use it to measure the kinetic energy of the gas, but we don't do it so much for the solids or liquids. Okay. Now, the temperature of air in the room is approximately 300 degrees Kelvin. What is the average kinetic energy of the particles? Okay. So in one of the slides that I showed you earlier in this lesson, we had an equation. There it is. So E bar, or the mean kinetic energy, equals one and a half times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature in Kelvin. So remember the temperature is in Kelvin. Okay. So three on two. Now if you look up Boltzmann's constant, you'll see 1.3806 times 10 to the negative 23. Um, there's lots of different Boltzmann's constants, all with different units. But this is the SI unit one, so use this one. And so if you do all the multiplications, you'll get to 6.2127 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. Okay? That's the average kinetic energy of each of the particles in a gas. Okay? A gas at 300 degrees Kelvin. So it's a very, very minuscule amount of energy. But remember that even if you have just one mole of gas, you have 10 to the 23 particles in a mole of gas. So you could have you know, a sizable amount of joules 
um, if you have a mole of gas. So even though it seems small, this remember this is per this is per particle. Okay. So question nine now. The temperature of the room, uh, the, sorry, the temperature of the air in the room is approximately 300 degrees Kelvin again. If the kinetic energy is given by E equals half mv squared, so maybe the physics students would have seen this before, this equation, where m is the mass of the gas particle and v is the velocity, calculate the average velocity of the air assuming it is 100% nitrogen. Okay. So we want to know what the average speed of the air is, so the gas particles moving through the space. Okay. How fast are they going? So we start off by, one, we want to know what the average kinetic energy is. And it's basically the same as what we did in the last question. We just calculate it out again. So all the numbers are exactly the same. So 6.2127 times 10 to the minus 21. Right? That's the average speed of each particle. And now we want to know the mass of the N2 per uh, per molecule. We want to know the mass of one molecule of N2. So what we do is we divide the molar mass by the number of particles in a mole. Okay? So th just let's just see what that means. So we have the kilograms per mole divided by the number of particles per mole Okay, then these will cancel out, and so we're left with kilograms per particle, which tells us the mass of a single particle of N2. Okay, and that is our mass. Okay, um, so we can even talk about it in kilograms. So it's better to talk about it in kilograms because kilograms is sort of a more SI unit. Okay. So now if we rearrange this equation, we'll work out that V is equal to the square root of 2 times E on M. So how did I get that? Well, I started with E equals half MV squared. Then 2 times E equals MV squared. And then I'm sure you can see where that comes from now v squared equals 2e on m. Okay? And then the square root, obviously you can see how that works out. Okay, so there's that. And then we just put in all the numbers and hopefully we'll see if we can get the right answer. So here's all the numbers that we just worked out. And finally we get to the answer. If you put it all in your calculator, you'll get 516.806 meters per second. So the particles in, the, in this 300 Kelvin room, which is only about, say, 27 degrees Celsius, so about 27 degrees, the particles of N2 are moving at about 516 meters a second, so they're moving almost twice as fast as the speed of sound. Okay? So that's really incredibly fast, but it actually does happen. Um, so the particles in a gas can move extremely quickly, and um, so when they collide with things, they really hit each other quite hard, um, but remember that their mass is very small. So that allows them to travel very, very quickly. Okay, So this is a lot of complex maths here, and you did need to learn a little bit of physics to understand this. Um, but it's just a good way to sort of reinforce how temperature affects the kinetic energy of a gas. Okay. So explain why increasing the temperature of a gas system increases the reaction rate based on the kinetic energy distribution of the particles. So the velocity distribution of a gas means that not all particles um, at a given temperature will have enough energy to reach activation energy. Right? So because they don't all have the right energy, it doesn't always happen. So only a small proportion of particles can actually achieve the right energy. So remember that diagram that we had the energy was like here, so only this little amount of particles actually has the right energy. Okay. So when the temperature distribution, 
when the temperature increases, the distribution shifts to higher energies. So we had this first, and then we have this second. So you can see this is the higher temperature, this is the lower temperature. You can see that there are now more particles that have the right energy when we increase the temperature. This means now a higher proportion of particles has the correct energy for this system. And so because they all have the right, more, more of them have the right energy, more reactions are going to happen. So we get a higher reaction rate. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on the temperature and the effect on the kinetic theory. Uh, we saw how they link up and how temperature is actually a measure of the kinetic energy of gases, so of gas particles. So that's what we were looking at um, mostly today. We studied how velocity distribution is affect by, affected by temperature and how that sort of plays out um, for the rest of the kinetic theory. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.